This channel was created to share the true information about what is going on in Ukraine since 2022, about all bad things and crimes that have a place here. This could be useful for people who got lost in information web or deceived by propaganda. Today we can watch the whole interview with Russian captive soldier made by Ukrainian journalist Vladimir Zolkin. Introduce yourself, please. Kravtsov Pyotr, I am commander of Assault Paratroopers Division, 810 Brigade of Marines. Let me fix it. Is it okay now? Yeah. So when did you enter Ukraine? We entered twice to block Berdyansk. Then this task was cancelled and a week later we moved to Mariupol. We were in Mariupol and near Mariupol. Can you remember the exact date? I don't remember exactly. What month that was? That was March. March, I think early March or middle. Yeah, yeah, early March when the operation started. So that was start of special operation, so called. Yeah, we call it this way. But how do you really think? In my personal opinion, this is civil war. I think so. Because as for me, Ukrainians are brotherly people for us. Because I speak with Ukrainian soldiers here and I can see familiar faces. We have the same tempers and destinies. Yeah, but civil war is not when brotherly people fight. This is a war inside of one country, and other countries are not included. I'm agree, but this is my opinion. I want to find if this opinion is justified. In my division I spoke with Ukrainian captureds, and after being captured, I interacted with many civilian people here. Most of these people speak Russian and are part of Russian ethnic group, but they also can speak Ukrainian. No, I am talking about the fact that these people are Russians. Russians? Yeah, ethnically Russians who live in Ukraine. Okay, but if these ethnically Russians are captured by bullets, is this still civil war? Well, I didn't have such subordinate soldiers. I can say nothing about bullets. I just did not deal with them. Okay, the thing is that there are a lot of bullets, students and people of other nationalities are fighting in Ukraine. They are not ethnically Russians. So concept of civil war is little bit broken. I just answered your question, this is my personal opinion. It can be wrong from the point of view of international law or something. I am not really interested in international law. Not so much. The only thing is that I had to ask your permission to record it, not to violate international law and some conventions. So do you understand that that we are recording you and this video will be published. Yeah, of course. For us it's important to find out a point of view of some person and find if we can change it or country. I know that more than 140 nationalities exist in Russia. There is part of ethnic Russians among them. Also, there are a lot of nationalities in Ukraine, and there is a part of ethnic Russians among them. The meaning of Russian ethnic term should be clarified, by the way. But that facts don't make the war civil. The country invaded to other country. I repeat that it's my personal view. Okay, let's speak about... But I want to say one thing. Our official mission in Ukraine is fighting against Nazism. You know what I am talking about. Everybody knows that and... 
I came here because of this. People say that they were forced to go to war, but I did it by my desire and according to the oath, not for money. I cast your future question would be about and answered it. I thought that some segments of the population are oppressed here. Then, after some situation, I changed my point of view. I continued to fight to save the lives of my subordinate soldiers. Also, we had to complete the task, by the way. Ok, I want to find out some basic things. Did Russia invade Ukraine? Legally, yes. Practically? Practically, yes. Do you have some objections? Talking about my first understanding. Ok, this is your subjective understanding. We will talk a lot about that. But there are some objective things that I want to find out. So, did Russia invade Ukraine? Yes, it is. That's it. So, let's talk about your personal view. You were sure that you need to protect some segments of population here, right? Yeah, some nationalities. Ok, why did you think so? I think media said it to us from the beginning of this. What did they say exactly? They said that Russian speakers are oppressed here, there are Nazi government and a lot of Nazi military forces. Our task was to deal with them, to block and neutralize them. Understandable, so why does a person for example, some soldier living in Russia worry about the Russian language in a foreign country, in Ukraine. I really try to understand this, but I can't. Look, there are a lot of Ukrainians in Russia. Yeah. Imagine that we banned the Ukrainian language. So, did you really believe that people can't speak Russian here? Yes, yes. This is funny for you now. Not for me, this is just funny. We have a sincere conversation. Of course, you can say anything you want. But I want to sincerely say that only full idiot could believe that people can speak Russian in Ukraine. Maybe. How did you even imagine that? I thought that people can speak Russian at home, but they can't do it in government agencies and they can't keep records in Russian. Stop. Can I continue? I just wanna say that you really can keep official records only in Ukrainian. No questions. Can I talk? Yeah, please. So, next thing is that kids can't study Russian in school. This is serious problem. Also, I heard that people here are harassed on the basis of nationality. Let's figure it out. You said that there are a lot of Ukrainians in Russia. Yeah. Do Ukrainian kids in Russia study Ukrainian in school? Yes, in some regions, for example in Crimea. Wait, you are talking about some regions, but the question is simple. The question is, how many Russian schools teach Ukrainian? I don't know for sure. Google it, please. But I know that there are Ukrainian schools in Crimea. But Crimea is Ukrainian land. It's still Russia. No, Crimea is and will be Ukrainian. I don't want to touch the moral side of things. That happened in 2014, but economically Crimea is a part of what? Look, if you decided that Crimea is yours, no, war is always economics. Whose economy includes Crimea? 
Maybe tomorrow it will be Ukrainian land. Russia just annexed Crimea, that's all. No questions, but who maintained it? Yeah, but it does not make Crimea and the people there Russian. Not all of them. Of course, there are people who support Russia. Yes, somebody can support Russia, somebody Ukraine. But it does not make annexed territory Russian land. I have an answer. Information about schools was announced at the UN Forum in 2019. I think it's still topical. So there are 2 million Ukrainians in Russia and no one Ukrainian school. Zero. This is UN Forum in Geneva. Right, you should deal with the oppression of Ukrainians in Russia. But you came to a foreign state because you believe that children can study Russian here. But you should know something else. Also, it's a fact that the document flow has been in Ukraine for a very long time. Nobody cares about that included people in Lugansk and Donetsk. Also, there was a law on teaching in Ukraine. It still works. But they gave us five years to rebuild. So children have to gradually switch to Ukrainian during five years. So they are not forced. You said that there are a lot of Ukrainians in Russia, so the thing is... Wait, this is not the main reason. Hey, let's continue. So the next reason is... I said that I am not politician or something, only my opinion. But I voice my arguments. Because we do it for Russian viewers who maybe believe in things you believe. Okay, no questions. I have a simple example. There are two brothers who live in the same houses. Whatever. And one of brothers said, I wanna be friends with this guy who is your enemy. Maybe this example is too primitive, but it's easy to understand. So I believe that the politician decision was made because the Ukrainian people and the government decided to move to the side of the Russian geopolitical enemy. I understand that that was people's choice. So is the possibility of Ukraine to join NATO someone? Sufficient reason for your invasion and killing of people. My opinion is subjective, as I said. And I believe that no, any bad peace is better than any war. I officially declare that if I could turn back time and give my life to stop this war and save Russian and Ukrainian people who were killed here, I would do it. But I want to understand, did you really believe in that thing? Yeah. Why did you change your mind? I changed it partly. Understand what can we speak about next? And if we look at the situation, there are many options for the development of it. Of this war or special operation, doesn't matter. Based on the information I have in my head, there are three or four or five options. But I repeat that both Russian people and Ukrainian don't need this war anyway. Okay, let's summarize. First thing is the ban of Russian language. That's only one of number of reasons. Yeah, I try to summarize. Yeah, for our viewers. There is no any ban on the Russian language now or whenever. And this theoretically impossible and I repeat that only full idiot and dumb primitive person can believe this. Even if you watch it on TV. It never happens. Next. Speaking about NATO. Russia is not worried about the fact that Sweden and Finland are going to join it. They close their eyes and try to disassociate themselves from it. Like we don't care. 
Uh, they invaded us because of the theoretical chance for Ukraine to join. You all understand that this statement is just an excuse to invade. Not more or less. Let's go next. This is my subjective opinion, maybe I don't know something. Yeah, I have opinion, you have opinion. We get to know the main points. And I repeat, there can exist Russian officer who has opinion you had. So we try to discuss some things. That's all. So what else? What else? Yeah, tell me what was your motivation to come to Ukraine. These two points that I mentioned. We can deep into it, but I won't do it, okay? As you want. So we had that two points. Also, language is not the main thing. They told us, and as I understood that, Russian person always speaks Russian and thinks in Russian. And have dreams in Russian, I guess. Yeah, people think and have dreams in Russian. Yeah, that people are not allowed to participate in politics. People who support Russia even at the family area or social area, they were forbidden to do it. This is my opinion. As you said, it could be opinion of full idiot. No, 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 I don't call you that way. Look, I am in a situation where I can't argue with you because I am captured. You can do it, try. But people who say such words to me always respond for them. No, I did not call you that way, personal you. I said that you should be such person to believe that. Don't you agree? Say it. Don't wanna listen. I use such unkind words because people still come here to kill and rape Ukrainians. It's a fact. It's happening now. They kill people. Listen. They kill people because they believe that Russian language is forbidden. So can I use such words speaking about them? Yes, but they still do it. I believe that the ground under them have to burn. Yeah, they are criminals. But I said not about you. I say about people who think that somebody is oppressed and need protection here. People who trust propagandists who declare that they almost captured Kyiv at the beginning of the war. They are still bombing us, but when they have to retreat, they call it a good gesture. They really say it. They are like, we did not capture Ukraine. Ukraine because we did not want to. This is good will get you. We don't want to destroy it. And then, then continue to do it. Dropping bombs every day. Had the Independence Day recently. There were 189 irate elements. So you need to be crazy and mindless person to believe this propaganda and come to Ukraine to kill people. Yeah, it's unpleasant for you, but what else can you say? You said you are ready to give your life away to save people. Now you can do it without giving your life away. You can say something to save people. I am doing it now. Okay, so I want to hear your story. Yeah, but I want to say something. As you want. My opinion after release from here will be the same as now. It won't change. Do you finally understand that I did not mean to offend you? Yeah, no problem. He was flare up a little bit, but your opinion that you can argue with me is wrong. Thanks. You can do it. Okay, I heard you. Yeah, that's all. I mean, human life is very important. Because I most know valuable thing. I don't try to seem a kind man or yours or something. I don't say that I did not shoot or something. But I wanna say that as I know more than 320 or 330 children died and about 700 kids were injured. It's terrible. And I repeat, the people who committed these crimes should be punished. People from both sides of the conflict.
I can't name these people, I don't know them, but I saw how both Ukrainian and Russian artillery brought the death of civilian people. I saw such situations. Civilians were dying there. I believe it was by accident, but this is a part of war. Yeah, I understand that it sounds cruel, but this is war and civilians die here. We had no order to kill or rob, we just had some incidents sometimes. Some people think that Russia came to destroy and kill everybody. Yeah, I have two examples of such Russians. There are some crazy bloggers in the internet who say that we should kill all the Ukrainians. There are a lot of them, a lot of, I understand they are crazy, we need a law for them, we must invent a law that will oblige them to come to Ukraine and fight Ukrainians with their bare hands. You can find such guys in online chats, this is just talking, if they are men with honor they should fight. Honor? What are you talking about? Two years ago Solovyev you said that it's unacceptable to fight with Ukraine. Now he says that Ukraine must be destroyed. They really have no honor. Yes, so we need a new law in our country and in Ukraine too. I suggest that people who write bloody comments come here and fight each other. They should come and realize what it feels like. Without any doubt what they are doing is exciting international hatred. And of course we have such laws, but there is one global thing. We did not come to your land. I agree with you, but anyway, talking about my division and about the soldiers who will subordinate to me, it's our common dignity, not mine. I say about soldiers who will subordinate to me, terminless or for some operation time. It was unacceptable for us to beat or torture a prisoner. We are civilized people. But I want to say, if someone does this, it's not human. That's all. I want to remind a butcher tragedy. In Russia they said that this is Ukrainian fake made by Ukrainian mercenaries, but to tell you the truth, after being captured I changed my mind. I admit that both sides are not completely honest, but anyway children were killed and women were raped, and someone should be punished for it. And this should be done publicly, not privately. Can I ask you? Yeah. Should Russia be punished for the invasion? It's a complex issue. I believe that people who made that decision must be punished. That's right. Your politicians, for example. But we need to find out what tasks were originally set and how they were carried out. Because I admit that we don't know the whole truth. And you don't know it too. Wait, it's the public domain. But this is only official information. So what? Look, I mean that Putin said that the purpose of the operation is the militarization and denazification of Ukraine. Don't need more information. Look, there is some geopolitical game. It does not matter. People died in the butcher and you call it a game. Let's find a root cause. Russia came here and people died. They were alive before. I agree with you. I don't think that Putin called the Ivanov soldier and asked him to rape someone or kill children. 
конечно. Of course he did not. Look, every crime has name and surname. Yeah, but invading is also a crime. I explained that as I know the invasion should not have been this global. It should have looked like what you had in 2014. No. 150,000 soldiers invaded from six sides and we had battles near Kyiv. They also stayed for two months near Kyiv. Excuse me. I could agree with you, but... You forgot the fact that February 24 at 4 am artillery started shilling peaceful Kharkov. Someone ordered to bombard the city with grad and peon shilling. That was not infantry assault, they just were bombing us. Time of 4 am is symbolic, by the way. After that, aviation was used and 150,000 people with rusty tanks invaded us. They almost reached the Kyiv. The offensive was not local. They tried to capture all of Ukraine. You can verify this by examining publicly available data. I hope you will watch this video and will analyze the available information of internet. You know, in general, the global task of our brigade was to block the militants in some areas. So-called militants, yeah? Anticipating your question, it's necessary to say that. I respect Ukrainian servicemen and even the Azov regiment. I respect them not because I am in captivity now. I respect them as warriors, that's all. I don't want to explain because someone might call me a nationalist or something. They fought well and in some ways we even followed the example of them, especially in city fights. I respect them. Which example do you mean? For example, system of firing. We had a simple strategy. Our convoys were entered the city and the Ukrainians started fighting and burned entire convoys. You could see it near Kyiv. We saw it and heard thousands of stories. Useful action that we borrowed from Ukrainians is frequent rotation. At the same time, we were constantly on the front line and rarely changed people. And there were a lot of such things. I don't touch the moral aspect, but we can talk about that too. In general, they fought well, but they also had incidents when soldiers left their mates in trouble. But most of Ukrainians were fighting well, and later I will mention two such marines I spoke with. I have a lot of stories, but let's finish the politician discuss. Okay, let's finish. That was my opinion. Yeah. But also I want to say that this is the point of view of not soldier, but Russian citizen. Okay. Citizen who has his own opinion. I clearly understand it. But we need to touch some general things. Not to hype or something, but to bring the truth to some Russian viewers. Many people don't like it, but half of our viewers are from Russia. And maybe some of them will understand that Russian speakers and Ukrainian speakers used to live peacefully before all the people. Somebody spoke Ukrainian, somebody Russian. Are you disappointed in your initial beliefs? You know, I find myself a soldier and a warrior of my motherland and a patriot in good way. Patriot who does something and does it well. Not only talking on TV as some people. So, unfortunately, lives and destinies of our soldiers are treated badly. I answer this way to put it mildly. Did you know it before? 
We did not have such context before. Okay, but I am talking not about that. I mean, you had some motivation to come here. Do you find it false now? Look, I do it but partly. I was wrong about the oppression of the Russian language. I explained it, how did I realize it? Yeah. Talking about geopolitical issues, I have some knowledge and my view did not change. But without any doubt, we had no right to solve it this way. Because people are dying and nobody can bring their lives back. And this is the main point. It's understandable, but listen, I want to find out why the average Russian does not care that Finland joins NATO right now. But they really care about theoretically possible joining of Ukraine. Maybe they just don't consider us independent state and this is the reason. You know, I wanna repeat my example. There was a theatrical performance on the border of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. It called three sisters. So our ordinary people were always brotherly. Do you believe that Russia is older brother who can control other one? Or just sister? Can she control other sisters? No, she can't because our countries have the same status. But geopolitically and historically, Russia always was a place that gathered other nations around. Let's distance from history. We must remember that in the 1990s there were several new independent states appear. And as you said, Russians continue to believe that they have the right to control other countries. I am not agree that Russians think so. They do, they really do. So this is a problem. Young brother, you follow wrong way, so I will grab you. You are not allowed to eat croissants in France, but you can eat stale cabbage soup with me. But we don't like to do it. We don't like to be powerless in our country as people in Russia. Perhaps you don't agree and you are going to argue with me. As we said, it's okay, try to refute my words. You can show me your position right now. You can argue with me. First of all, I want to say that if we had the possibility, I would like you to visit Russia. Of course, if I could provide safety for you, to let you see how do we live, but I am not sure that it would be possible, of course. I would also like to do humanitarian work in the military industry. I thought a lot about it, for example, missing persons search on both sides. Also, there are shortcomings with captives, because only here you can realize how it feels to be captive. Also, I am in the third stage of captivity now, and looking ahead, I expect that care about captives in Russia will be the same as here, as in this third, as in this third stage. I will come to Russia when I'll see the things they do towards own people and Ukrainians change it. I will answer this invitation with pleasure. Also when this government that I consider criminal will disappear. It's impossible to visit a country whose government has ordered to invade your country. You condemn it too, by the way. I condemn this way to act. I repeat the important thing. 
Any problem can be solved without physical damage done. Every political problem can be solved by speaking. Every economy problem also has some soul. But I repeat that this is point of view of person who knows not a lot of real political situation. I think you understand the situation. Based on your words, you perfectly understand the situation. You do it better than a lot of people in Russia who has all information sources, but they just don't care. They just know that something is going on. This is more simple than doing something, but whatever. I wanna say that there are thousands of captured soldiers in Russia now. Except that thousands of captured soldiers there are a lot of thousands of civil servants from Mariupol and other occupied cities. They used to work in the fire department, police or somewhere else. They were involved in public service. But now Russia impersonated them as captives of war. Also, there are tens of thousands of absolutely civilian people who were taken away from near Kharkiv, Mariupol, Kyiv and other places. Information is not confirmed. You can check it when you get back. Or I can show you the investigation of human rights defenders if you want me to. They all stay not in Russia, by the way. They are in Europe or impersonal. That's what it is. I keep in touch with them and have more or less true information. Also, ordinary Russians write me about the cases when a lot of civilians are taken to the captive camps. You can try to change something by your own. But I don't believe it's possible. It looks fantastic for me. But if you can do it, you don't need me for that. I believe it's possible. For example, connection. Can you do a call to home? Yes, I do. But every day I speak with tens, hundreds and thousands of people who know nothing about their captured relatives who are civilians. They just were taken away some way. Are they in Russia? They are in Russia or in occupied territories. We have not full information. They convince them to change citizenship or to support publicly what is happening. Or to tell on camera how they were humiliated here. Such things generally. If they were allowed to contact their relatives after your influence, that would be more than we can imagine now. Talking about soldiers, they should be allowed to inform everybody that they are alive. Talking about civil people who were taken out through the so-called humiliation corridor, I am agree. I believe that the issue of access to information and communication for these people must be solved now, without any doubt. Okay, we are done with general questions. Tell me your story. How did you arrive? I arrived to Ukraine when battle started. I will skip some military things of my story, but I will tell you about the things that impressed me and changed something in me, as you want. Things that changed something inside my head. First of all, I wanna say that there is an opinion that all the Russian soldiers are criminals. I believe there are individual cases. But I repeat that we did not have any orders to rape or torture or kill civilians. Can I explain? To let you know how do Ukrainians think. There are individual cases of some awful maniac behavior, but every Russian soldier is criminal for Ukrainians because he arrived here not with good intentions, not to plant flowers. 
Look, it's a two-fold situation. I agree that person with gun is person with gun, and every civilian feels danger about us. I thought that people would be happy about us, and there were such cases. In Mariupol I was able to visit some manumated districts, as we say. So, I communicated with people and they had divided minds. I knew that they are normal people. They did not help the army of Russian Federation, just ordinary civilian people. Yeah, and speaking with them, I found that they have divided minds. Some of them were saying, we don't need you, why did you come? For example, there was some Vasily Ivanovich. I wanna say hello to him if he is watching this. He and his wife Masha are good people. They let us spend the night in the house twice. He is about 16 years old. And once he said, if I was younger and not disabled, I would fight with you, cause you came to my land. But we got on well, not to press or something. That was interesting experience. He was like, I don't like this, this and this in Ukraine, but you should not have come. Yeah, I'm talking about this, that's why we consider you criminals. But there were people who were glad to see us, not to get some privileges. Yeah, yeah. I understand, in some regions of Ukraine there was a part of people who were loyal to Russia. That's true. But in the not occupied territories where shilling continues, there are no such people, no more. They feel that shilling and consider all the Russians criminals. I know it exactly. And uh, History has no assumptions, I agree, but who knows what Kuban people would say if Ukrainians will come there. Let's mirror it. Your country is under bombs and fire. Enemies rape women, there are pregnant women from them. Imagine me a captive and you have to interview me. And I would say that there are bad and good people among us. Like these guys are good, these guys are bad. But the thing is the objective perception of Ukrainians is unified. Except some people who are over 16 years old and miss the Soviet past. There are a lot of such people in Ukraine, Russia and Belarus. Who don't know about the fact that the Soviet Union is over. But they have the right to express their opinion. Everybody has, but any country is not allowed to invade another. You are right, it's wrong to say that we are good people. Because we are enemies for ordinary people anyway. You say it right. I would say the same if I was in your place. So I am totally agree with you. Talking about the people, there are different people and different opinions. There are a lot of people who said, yeah, cool that you came here. They said it without treats and fear. That were conscious words. So without any doubt, there are different people in Ukraine. Talking about bombing of residential areas where people live, I have the impression that they do it on purpose to stop people who supported Russia earlier doing this. If they had such goal, now it's achieved. If you want to conduct an experiment about the attitude towards you in different regions, I can help you to visit some cities of Ukraine and feel it. I understand it and I repeat that I have impression that they do it in purpose. There is big difference between official goals and what we really do.
They say that we are brothers, but bombs are dropping. According to information I got here, how can I not comment it? Brother would not kill brother. Brother would not rob brother. They are brothers. Every brother can choose who to be. I agree. For example, Mike Tyson became a boxer and his brother a surgeon. But Mike Tyson did not beat him for it. This is brotherhood. But this is not what Russia do. This is nonsense, just a legend. How many time do you think should pass after a special military operation to let us return the old level of relationships? We can use MF. It's 2022 now. Yeah. Imagine the child whose parents were killed by Russians in 2022. The guy will live at least 50 years. He will recall it every day. When he will become a parent, he will tell his children about things Russian did. There is a real case when four-year-old kid saw his dad killed and his mom raped. He hid and was watching this. He could do nothing. Will he pass it on the kids? This is one of cases. But all the country is under bombs now. I do not live in a parallel universe. I communicate with people. I speak with people who supported Russia too. I mean they did it before. But now the loyalty is cracked or turned it other way. Like that. So this situation will be changed not soon. Let's repeat the question. Remember the date when you entered Ukraine, when the operation started? First of March? Yes. We left and went back again. When did they caught you? Two months ago. June 20? Yes. How was they captured? That was interesting situation. I think they should find it out in Russia, cause enemies came from rear. I was going to meet group of people who had to change us later. I was with my mate and enemies cut us off. Vehicles were moving towards us. I destroyed the radio station and was going to kill myself. But mate said, let's go out. And we started moving to the nearest checkpoint. Why did you wanna kill yourself? Not to be captured. Did you think that we will torture you here? No, there are a lot of cases during the war when... Uh, okay, I wanna make remark. 98% of my time I was not acting like company commander. Like staying at command watching point, for example. Or staying somewhere else. I always stayed ahead with my mates Alak, Timur and other guys who were always ahead too. We were never behind because I always need to see what is going on. Also we had less killed ones than other groups. That's why I was going to meet that change group. And that's why I knew that I would rather die than being captured. So did you destroy your radio? Yeah, I did it. I failed a little bit, but whatever. We decided to get some grow where one of divisions had to stay according to our data. Yeah, like this. Ukrainian division? Russian. They would not go to our guys. Yeah, we went there, the way was free to go. Also, we had no other one, especially without a radio station. We had a map on phone, but whatever. Destroyed it too. So there were 20 meters to the position and we found ourselves under fire. My friend was wounded and I cared about him. I've introduced myself and asked them to stop. Need to say that there is bad connection between military groups sometimes. Especially there was bad interaction between our division and some other groups, by the way. Friendly fire. Yes, it's typical for both sides. 
I told them my nickname and division. I approached them. But not Russian soldiers came from the woods. Okay. That's how I was captured. I was sure they would kill us and asked them about it. They said, we are not like you. The same words we always said to Ukrainian soldiers. It's well known that Russian soldiers kill Ukrainians and on the contrary. I know that there are such cases, but not everywhere as I saw. How many killed soldiers of Russian army did you see for that three months? Try to remember. Russian soldiers. Yeah, there were five killed people in my division of 102 soldiers before June 20. So, and a lot of wounded people. Some people left because their contracts were over. They had some other reasons. So, I had about 15% of my division, including me. Like 15, 20 people. Yeah, like that. Not bad. I have interesting question. Did you have people who refused to fight? Yeah, and there was some extremely dangerous situation because of it. I faced these cases when people had to stay in the rear and cover us from there. And they just left their positions. They made a crime and other soldiers died because of them. And what about people who refused to do something? There were such people after hot battles in Mariupol, but I understood them. There were a lot of them. The main task for me is to save my people. What happened with them? They left without problems. I know such cases. They got a vacation, as I know. Also, some people got their contracts over somebody. But quit. also, there were people who extended their contracts. I know, what do you lead me to now? And I wanna say, to be honest, I don't know it. Seriously, question is just a question. I spoke with San Sanich here, can I tell it? Yeah, San Sanich is legendary person to be mentioned. Yeah, great guy. And I wanna make a remark about this place. My stereotypes were broken here, cause I met some people I saw on TV screen before, I won't name them. I was speaking with them by my own and I felt good attention. It's great. They did not want to recruit me, by the way. I'm not traitor or ayuda. My attention here in this place is really good, I will never forget it. However, my destiny will go on. I am sincere about it. So what did he try to lead you to? I guess you think that there are places where refused soldiers are tortured or something. We don't know it. All the current information we got from our captives. So we hear different things here. Also, there is such information you said. There is special trade mark in military ID. The stamp says prone to betrayal and lies. I heard about it. Also, there is a myth that that Russians who refuse to fight are going to prison. No, they don't. I don't know. I have some information at this moment. They tried to do it at first, but then they realized that prisons would be full soon. So they stopped doing this. Now you could be fired or sent to some faraway military unit or something else. Talking about my soldiers, my people overcame a long way. Maybe it sounds strange for you, but they fought well. And they just tired. I understand. They requested me. And I answered. Okay, this is your choice. I don't blame you for it. You will live with it. So, there are no punishment groups for ill. This is popular topic now. 
No, but that was difficult a little bit to transfer them to Sevastopol. They had to leave to other place and then to Sevastopol. There were no scheduled buses or something. So you need a week or week and a half to reach there. I communicated with such people and they are not cowards, talking about my soldiers. But there are people who come to earn money, but when they realize that they can find death here, they become traitors. There are idea men and there are cowards. And sometimes good guys die because of them. Russians who say, I won't go there, I don't want to. How do you feel about them? They have own opinion, they will live with that. But I wanna say something else. If someone calls on to kill Ukrainians and starts to hide from military commissars when it's time, when he will refuse when time for that will come. I don't wanna say how I call such people. There is a video where journalists meet people on the streets of Moscow and St. Petersburg and asks about the operation. They said that they support it, but when he offered to sign the contract, everybody refused. You know, there are such people in Ukraine too. This is funny, because the video was filmed in one frame, and 10 men were ready to give their lives for motherland, but when they saw enroll list, they ran away. Yeah, there are such people. 10 of 10 people ran away. What is the difference between Ukrainian soldier and Russian? I think Ukrainians are fighting on their own land. That was first thing. Talking about goals, both Ukrainians and Russians know what do they fight for. We spoke about that before, so I don't want to repeat. I am silent, did you notice? Yeah, I did. But generally they are the same people in same situation, although there are little differences. I was captured by soldiers of Eider battalion. I spoke with the leader and I want to express my respect to him. What a worthy man, my view was different before. I spoke with him without any humiliation, just conversation between two officers. Who you think are right sector, I dare as all. During all this time I met only one person who admitted himself as a fascist and Banderovitz. I won't name him. That was only one person who said that. Maybe it was a fit of anger. He said, you a dead man, I am that fascist that you was looking for. That was fit of anger. Yeah. So I felt that. The thing is that I never met such people anymore. Yeah, it's understandable. I asked people and nobody answered, yes, I am a fascist. Tattoos represent the... how to say it right? Religious or cultural views. But no one recognized himself as an ultra-right nationalist. Is it not their own choice to be ultra-right nationalist? That's their choice. But you should know that... Okay, we should not dip into it too much. There is a difference between government policy and personal position. Of course, in Russia they say that this is your government policy. It would be interesting to talk about our government policy. I think you know or heard something about this. The prohibition of Russian language, as I said, and so on. Look, there are ultra-right nationalists in any country, of course, and in Russia too. I can play you a one half minute video with swastikas, tattoos, etc. I know it. I think this could be such a game. No, 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 I don't deny it.
I mean that such things are typical for some subcultures. That's right. For example, football hooligans. Of course, there are also orthodox groups. Yeah, yeah. Yes, when Russians watch it, I gonna say how it was. Kadyrov published one and a half minutes video about Nazis. They tried to find the most terrifying things. Everything they could find, including Photoshop stuff and footages from other countries, they put in there. I am grateful to them for gathering all the proofs of Ukrainian Nazis in one video. So I made the same video cut. Absolutely identical, but there are more Nazi materials from Russia. Especially from 2000s. Tisak and others, I could make a long film about it. But the thing is, when Russians watch Kadyrov's video about Ukrainians, they do it with big pleasure. When they watch about Russia, they try to find some counter-arguments. That was a long time ago. Is this Photoshop? When that was? This is typical behavior of all the people. I am tired of it already and just wanna say. Guys, hide your mentality somewhere deep. All the people act like this. Yeah, but they should look around and see what they got in their country. Remember what you said about ban of Russian schools in Ukraine? How many Ukrainian schools exist in Russia? No one. So let's try to be objective, just try. And there are a lot of such examples. Everything they were saying about Crimea and Donbass since 2014. Do you understand that war began in 2014? Yeah. Yeah, I got some books to read here. You know, not propagandic literature, books about the roots of conflict here. And I can say that situation is ambiguous. Yeah, it's ambiguous. You're right. Since Maiden protests. I'm sure that this situation certainly did not give Russia the right to invade our territory. And to do what they did, especially if we are so-called brothers. It's clear as for me. Talking about everything else, a lot of nuances. There are a lot of questions without answers. But are you allowed to touch that questions here? Of course I am. I am even allowed to discuss with skeptics about that. So you can ask me anything here and I'll try to answer. I don't have questions. Do you ask if we have some closed topics in the country? Yes, yes. No, you can go with a loudspeaker to Kreshatik and say whatever you want. Maybe they will ask you to be quiet in the union. Some captured officers here wanna visit families of dead subordinate soldiers after release. To speak with wives and parents. Did you think about doing it? Of course I did and do. Will you visit them? Yes, I will. How many soldiers died during all the time? We had five people died, as I said. Less than other divisions, but they were good people who could do some deeds in their lives. What did they die for? For close ones? I wanna answer this way. Understandable. I will not touch political issues. Our division was fighting to save each other and to perform the task. In the context of what has been said, maybe it would be logical to turn around and go home? No. Why? Just no. Our absence would lead to death of many people. I saw such cases when people who must cover other group left. 
when here is me and there are nobody in three kilometers. Enemies can come from rear and kill us. If I left my position, other group would be murdered. Let's think globally. Imagine if all the divisions would turn around and come out. It would be not the army anymore. We all took the oath and must be patriots as for me. I find myself a patriot in the normal sense of the term. Did you serve in the Department of Defense? Yes. So your duty is defending, but it looks like Department of Attack. Where is the violation of the oath if we have the concept of criminal order? And the order was objectively criminal. We can talk a lot about the correct name of this department, but there are tasks out of Russian bounds. And we must execute such orders too. It calls military doctrine. Okay. So would you follow this doctrine again? As I said, I would not go. Also, if I could do act of suicide to stop this war and save all the people who are suffering because of war, to let people come home, I would do it immediately. Talking about Ukraine, since 2014 all smart people in Ukraine and Russia understood that this sluggish conflict would turn into something more. That was obviously, without any doubt, everybody understood that. Everyone hoped it would freeze. Okay, look, if you analyze it, it could end or freeze or continue. We had several options for the development of events. Of course, it's true. Yeah. But people who made the decision in Russia planned some other way of going of this operation. I think they imagined it different way. That's why we got all this now. How can we imagine it according to public data? February 24, one person launched a special operation for denazification and demilitarization of Ukraine. Of course, I will say nothing about their goals, because they are not achievable. Demilitarization works in reverse, and he needs to look at the mirror and shoot himself to get demilitarization done. So we can say nothing about the goals, but it's well known that on this day massive shelling of Ukraine started. Many cities were under bombs. Near 140,000 soldiers of Russian army invaded Ukraine from six ways. They were trying to take Kiev for two months and then retreated. So what happened there according to public data? We have already discussed this. Yes. You know, sometimes you answer like, this is my opinion. Okay, but we have a conversation here. We repeat the same things, I don't see the point in it. It's necessary to repeat this for Russians, but they can rewind and watch it again. They won't. They have been told about how bad Ukraine is for 20 years. In every interview we must remind at least 20 times about the unreasonable invasion to Ukraine. I explained all reasons of this, we discussed it before. You believed these reasons are real before, but they are not. I repeat, I don't know what the political elites in Russia and Ukraine want. Maybe we'll find the answer in the end of conversation. I can't find correct answer. So maybe somebody will watch it and find an answer. That's all. Talking about the expectations of the beginning of a global conflict, I'm not agree with you about it, 
There were a few options, as I said. Most people thought that the conflict was decreasing based on the data of the decreasing number of deaths of people. Fewer people died. In 2018-2021 the conflict was almost frozen. You can talk to people here and find it out by yourself. And somebody did not like what was it all about. Somebody has other plans. I want to ask you something. Who benefits the most from this? America, for sure. Speaking facts, I repeat, it's USA. It's my opinion. Can we explain it? Even not only USA. Everybody says it, but nobody can explain why. Listen, let's look at this situation. USA is a geopolitical opponent of Russia. I think we're gonna find the answer we had to start from it. So, who is Russia's geopolitical opponent? Own government is the enemy of Russia in every sense. Geopolitical, I mean. The government is the enemy of Russia in any sense. There are so many resources in Russia, so Russian people should live like Arab sheikhs. But they don't have gas and the toilet inside. Who is enemy? Talking about the toilet outside, is their choice to live like this? A lot of people got toilet inside in villages. By the way, they have a gas in some villages and they have not in other ones. Also, people who live well don't join the army, and you can convince me. I spoke with a lot of captured soldiers here, and I always hear I joined the army because there was no other way. This is stability. People in Russia live worse than they could do, but Russia does not care about people. But that's my opinion. Yeah, politically, there are two countries getting damaged now. And who has a benefit from it? Who? This is my question to you. All I can do is to ask you back. Okay. Did Biden force Putin to bomb Ukraine? Let's finish the thing. Okay, I'm interested in your opinion. Everything has a reason to be. You cannot understand it. I explained the simple truth to you three times. You say that you can't talk about it three times. And now you ask me about geopolitical benefits. Maybe you will realize someone that there was an attempt to brazenly Swiss Ukrainian territory and Ukrainian government. And the media of propaganda are talking nonsense all the time about necessity of Nazi government destroying. And now you say something about USA and geopolitics. You are not ready to accept the primitive things that happened. You have a model of thinking of typical Russian person. And I hope somebody who is same to you will watch this video and will see the truth. Like, oh, we bombed Ukraine for six months and blame USA, this is nonsense. What are we doing? So go and attack USA or NATO. Yeah. They are your enemies. Ukraine is not NATO member. Go fight NATO with your rusty stuff. I wanna see you doing this with your old Soviet stuff. Can I answer your question about USA? Speaking simple words, if we attacked your Donetsk or Lugansk or Crimea in February 24, and February 25 Western countries would start supplying us with weapons or questions. That would mean that somebody secretly planned this. 
If we started the soul in winter, you would be right, and you could blame the USA that way. But Russia did it first. And why do England and USA support us? There had a place some memorandum, as you know. Yeah, that was Budapest memorandum. According to it, Russia can't attack us and should save our state from enemies. Countries of the memorandum should help us in war and they do it now with their weapons. They are not agreed to involve own soldiers, but they help us other ways. Do American taxpayers want to help Ukraine? I don't think so. They would like to spend this money for themselves. Talking about land lease. They don't talk about it in Russia, but America helped the Soviet Union to overcome the Germany with weapons in World War II. They helped to fight aggressor. And the same things are happening nowadays. Let's speak more about geopolitics. I have a question. When the Soviet Union was fallen... Sorry, we can't hear you good enough. I'm going to ask the same question. It's such obvious question, by the way. What was condition of Russia when the Soviet Union collapsed? What condition? Very bad condition. Yeah, there was no government or something else. Come and take it. What did USA do? What did the country that wanted to destroy Russia do? Bush began supplying chicken legs for Russians, and Russians ate it with great pleasure. It was the best moment to destroy Russia, and the best time to invade and take Crimea, you can see that your property was after the Maiden protests. The same situation. Ukraine was in trouble and there was no normal government or person to make decisions. Russians who called us brothers came and take away a part of land. It doesn't matter what people think. Perhaps the inhabitants of the Kuril Islands want to be part of Japan. I'm sure people will choose to live in Japan. But you don't care about it and this is not the reason to give Japan a part of your territory. Without any doubt, they would have better living there. You say that Crimea people support Russia. Yes, but you can't capture it because of them. Here is geopolitical reference for you. There was a maiden protest. I'm free to say that I did not totally support it. This is true, I really found it ambiguous. I was watching and analyzing. Of course, I supported people to wish be part of European values, but I felt interference from outside. Not from USA, but from Russia. It can't be proven, so it's just my opinion. I believe that they did it, Russia had a lot of profit from that. They did it really secretly, and nobody can prove it now. So here is Maiden, here is a split of the country, here is Russia coming and taking Crimea off. So why did not USA act the same way when Soviet Union collapsed? And nowadays. It's a fact that Russia invaded Ukraine and Russians continue to blame USA. Because America is your geopolitical enemy. And I say again that Russian people main enemy is your government. You would live much better without them. But you always think that America is bothering you and I don't understand this. I just don't understand it. Invent your own iPhone, don't use American one. I don't use it. 
You said that you had a phone with map on it and Nokia phone. No, you said it. No, that was not a phone. I don't use two, by the way. This is South Korean phone. It doesn't matter. I understand what are you talking about. I also want to see my country rich and with developing science. I want our people get rich too. Everybody wants it. And America does not hinder you. It's understandable. Where is geopolitical stuff? I just expressed my opinion, it can be wrong and you can have your own. Yeah, you have your own opinion and I respect it. Was it a good argument about America? Argument was good. Worth considering? Yeah. So don't be twisting the facts. You don't. Are you sure? I am agree with you about USA. These two hours we spent not in vain. We are not trying to demonize or angelize USA, by the way. Let's say like that. This is a country with own interests. But when Russia blames America for everything, this is too much. Yes, I agree. Also, I remind one thing. There are a lot of videos where Russians call USA an enemy. For example, a video where a Russian journalist asks people on the street who is their enemy. In Russia? Yeah. People were talking about America. Fun fact is that we met all the propaganda stereotypes today. I tried to say it softly because I was rude a little bit at the beginning. It's good that you do it. We heard all the things Russian propaganda always says. I have a question for you. How has America harmed Russia over past 30 years? I can't answer. American cars harmed the Russian auto industry. Hey, stop it. Ford smashed Moskvich. It's a joke, relax. This is understandable, let's speak with facts. I think we should finish this topic. I think we could find some arguments, but it's a waste of time. Because Russia attacked Ukraine, not USA, that's all.